and we're back with some more RimWorld. And today we are not faffing about. Slight change in policy plan. I think what's uh, been holding us back for a while is I've been concentrating too much on the tombs. Just raiding as many tombs as I possibly can. But then I realised we've got everything we need from the tombs. Everyone's fully armoured up. I mean, we have a whole bunch of good, good recon armour going around. Everyone's got great weapons. We've got Zeus hammers as secondaries for a whole bunch of people. Or even Persona Monoswords. Everyone's well equipped. What we don't have is the wizards. So what we're going to do today is we're going to spend a fair chunk of time here just meditating at this tree and leveling people up. I want to get index up to a level 6 wizard before we leave today. I want them all the way up. They're up to Silent level 2. Currently Chief is over here and they're, uh, they're leveling up their shooting skills. We also gave them a bit of a minor operation to install a learning assistant. It gives them a global learning factor of plus 20%. Downside, I'm pretty sure if they get EMP they'll fall unconscious. Which would be hilarious if they accidentally did that while trying to shoot the alpaca. But this is help leveling up their shooting, which is hit level 6. We're going to keep them training while everyone else is praying. And, you know, everyone getting a nice little dose. Uh, Index here, I believe, also got some operations on them. They now have a bionic leg and a bionic eye. And their movement speed is now hitting 6.15. They are insanely fast. Index the legs? In index the zippy? I, I don't know. Zippy von Index? Index the hair? I, I have no idea what we're going to call them, but Index is definitely the fastest pawn I think I've ever owned. We're definitely leaving them in marine armor as well. We're never giving them anything to slow them down. They are just so fast. Anyway, let's uh, skip it forward and see what Randy has in store for us today. 20 anima grass later, and we can begin the linking ritual for Index. That'll take them to level 3. Once they're level 3, well, we're going to keep staying here until we get them to level 4. And then maybe even longer. Uh, peace talks, don't care about those. Uh, at the same time, Chief over here, they're really racking up the skill points. They're up to 7 shooting, they've gained 2 old devils. And food binge for Pinky because they're a gourmand. Well, that's okay, Pinky, you go nuts. This is... This is working out pretty well. Pinky gains the Psy ability Chaos Skip at level 3. Uh, not a great one to be honest, but we don't care. So long as they get up to level 6, that's all we're really interested in right now. We've managed to pick up a quest that will gain us some honour and doesn't look like it's too strenuous. Uh, basically lend someone a colonist for 5 days. They'll send a shuttle to pick them up. I'm thinking... yes. We shall accept that and we'll accept that with Chief. Boom. Eh. Uh, the reason we're sending Chief is Chief can't pray at the tree, so they're not really that much use to us at the moment. They're uh, they're busy training up their shooting skill, which is now up to level 8, which is kind of impressive. This is too easy. For now. Let's see what Randy thinks of this plan. Uh, Index is about to gain another level. That will put them up to level 4. I'm liking this strategy so far. If we can get Index up to level 6 before we leave this tile, I would be more than happy with that. Their level 4 ability is Focus. It's basically like a... A, a magic based version of go juice it just makes the, the target you cast it on faster better stronger at everything it improves consciousness and everything i believe actually quite a decent skill we could cast that on people before we go into combat and it would definitely help out chief has been returned to us from their quest and uh, they have gained three honor out of it now all we need is well a lot more we need to get them up to a knight which is 21 honor that's going to be tricky but if we can get that, we can start trading with the Empire, which I really, really, really want to do. Index has gained their next side level up to level 5. Yes, I know this is moving along quite quickly. Randy hasn't thrown anything silly at us just yet. Uh, their level 5 ability, though, is very interesting. It's Fire Skip. Fire Skip, I'm going to have to play around with this, but it means if we send out, say, a pawn ahead onto the world map and send them out to set up a colony ahead of us, we can then tell Index to teleport to them, and in a radius of effect around them, everyone standing nearby will also get teleported. I'm not sure exactly how we can caravan everyone that way. I think you can use this on the world map. Hmm, I'm going to have to do some experimenting around. I think there's some interesting things we can do with that ability. It does cost them 70% of their psi focus, but being able to teleport people from one camp to another? Oh hell yes, we are going to totally try and exploit that. We have unfortunately run into a, a random problem here, and that is that Randy has sent us a cold snap. This is going to kill off all the plants, and as well as that, well, with all the grass gone, we won't be able to support our pack animals at the same time. Most of the local animals will run away, well, once they wake up, and that will leave us without our first line of defense. So it's time we packed up and left this place. On the bright side, Index is now a, what, a level 5 wizard? Uh, and one second, we had some good stuff around here. Ah, the skip I cast. Yes. We can give them skip right now. That will make them a much more effective pawn. Perfect. Uh, let's pack everything up and get our caravan out of here. I haven't gone through this in a while, but the way I like to pack my caravan... Ooh, psychic soul. Soothe. I like to uh, set them a zone. In this case, I set them a zone right on top of the caravan parking spot before we start making the caravan. Uh, reason being, 
once they're in there, it's much easier for everyone to get them get together and hey, you, what what are you doing eating that? Stop that. You can't eat that. Mm. It's fine. It's fine. We're not going to cry over some spilt jelly. But with all the animals in there, the moment we start the caravan, it should start up really quickly. We queue up a caravan containing only one pawn and a big chunk of the animals and pretty much everything in the entire base. We're not taking all the steel though. We don't want the steel. But we're going to take everything that's not nailed down in this first run. And then at the same time, we go into scheduling here. Where is it? Work. And we set everyone to load. Crank that up to two. Now everyone's going to start loading all of those. They're getting distracted by us, other minor things. By having all of the animals really close to everything we're trying to load, well, not quite everything, we still have to get all of these. This might take a moment or two. Uh, we, we made a few of these games of Ur in the background. And there we go. That's our first wave dealt with. Chief will go off with them and they will exit the map and they're going straight south. Where did we send them? We actually sent them straight south. You know what? I'll do a little bit of testing on direction leaving. It's pretty interesting. I'll show you in a minute. But uh, next up, we have to do a second caravan. But first, we're going to dismantle everything. We queue up the uninstall of literally everything we're bringing with us. All of the bedrolls, the telescopes, the statues, the games of war, even the hoopstone. I remembered it this time. We're taking a lot of them. We're going to get everyone to uninstall them. Though, hey, why is everyone cleaning? One moment while I get. Oh my god, I left the doors open and the rats are eating all our food. And that's what you get when there's a cold snap. Never mind, never mind, it'll be fine. Once all of our buildings are uninstalled, then we start the next caravan. The reason I don't uninstall these and do just one big caravan all at once, well then you're without statues, you're without a dining area, you're without, it can lead to a bunch of negative side effects. So what I like to do is only send one person. If they're going to have a problem, then we can rotate them out or do something. This two-stage process just makes things a lot simpler and you're far less likely to forget something. Then we get everyone to load up this next caravan, which should pretty much be as fast as, well, even faster than the last one, last one because there's less to load. And then they're out of there. And they should follow the previous caravan in the exact same direction because it seems... Yep. Where the hell did the other one go? Oh, Chief's already on the road. And then they go down here, they zip off the map, and then we can merge the two caravans once they're off. Okay. Nails, come on. Hurry up. Oh, who's... Oh, what's wrong with the alpaca? Oh. Yeah, I might want to set that one for culling. What's that one? 51? Yeah, 51 is going to get removed from the roster in a bit. And that's it. Both of them are out on the world map. Fire skip? Oh, you can fire skip on the world map. That is going to be interesting. So we could fire skip and catch up with this pawn. Hmm, that means we could send someone ahead to, say, a town and then teleport directly there with all of our gear already on us. That would... Hmm, next time. Next time we're going to do that. For now, we're just going to bring our two caravans together and merge them up. A quick detour to a test map here. I want to cover something that came up quite aggressively in the comments last time. There's a theory that if you send your caravan, say, north on the map, that when they leave the actual, your your home map, they will leave via the north. Or if you send them south, they'll leave via the south section of the map. However, this doesn't seem to be quite accurate. Here we have, uh, there's six directions you can possibly leave in because the tile is shaped like a hexagon, and we have six pawns. And each pawn has been assigned to six separate caravans, so all of them are going to go in theory, six different directions. And if you can imagine this, north has been told to go north, south has been told to go south, southeast, etc. You know, all of them have been told to go through their appropriate directions. So if we unfreeze south here, they should go directly south. Okay, that's one for that theory. Uh, we'll have southwest. They are, they're actually going southwest. Okay, southeast, where are you going to go? Uh, southeast is going middle. Okay, but that's still east so i suppose that's good and then we have northeast they're going to go bottom east okay they're supposed to be going up here yet okay but it's still east i suppose so it's not like it's that bad northwest you are going to yeah you're also going to go down there but so far it's not actually that bad they're all going appropriate to the directions except for north north is going to go where is the where is north going okay north is going directly south Right, now this would, would sort of co coincide with what some people said in that this is completely random. Where they go is just completely a roll of the dice. Uh, the fact that North decided, you know what, I'm going to go all that direction. You know what, let's cancel that and let's, uh, let's start another caravan for them. All right, form your caravan, buddy. Where are you going to go? Are you going to go North this time? Are you going to go North? Come on, we've picked North for you. No, no, they're going to go directly South again. Okay, well, turns out there's no real way to predict it. One other thing that was brought up in the comments is there was a there used to be an option in a previous version where you could designate which direction they left on the map. Unfortunately, that has been removed, so you can't do that anymore. You basically pick a direction, you, you pick somewhere on the map, and they automatically decide where they're going to exit.
I totally forgot to abandon our last colony. That was sloppy. Oh, actually, wait. There was something I wanted to try. Something a little bit naughty. Ooh, actually, never mind. Um, hmm. Yeah, this, this would look like an interesting one where we could attract the pirates to this tile and then, you know, just leave them there to starve to death. But it'll take four days for them to arrive, and I'm not sure if they'll arrive in this tile or the next tile we settle. So I think instead we'll just abandon this. We, we, we don't need this tile. That's that, that's fine. Bye-bye. Uh, let's get down and get ourselves some trading on. It's been way too long since we did any trading. Oh, I find trading so therapeutic at the moment. I don't know, is this retail therapy or what they call it? That is an enormous amount of silver to sell off. 15,000 silver just in the random gunk you collect when you're going around the map. Also a lot of steel games of war. Uh, also a skill trainer intellectual because we have literally zero use for intellectuals on any of our colonists. We want, you know, dumb people. Um, two skill trainer plants we've managed to pick up which will help with us foraging. Uh, side trainer for wall rays, side trainer for beckon, a bunch of simple meals, luciferium, some chem fuel because we got ourselves a jump jet pack, psychic shock lance. We use gold. We bought a bunch of random gold at the end just to, so we, they, they have enough trade money left. Recon Helmet Accent, Heavy SMG Accent. Just some general improvements for our people all around. Ooh, that is a lot. I got a lot of trading. Now, we need to avoid that, but I think I think we'll just head there. And head straight over there, and we move. Damn, we move fast. I suppose now that we've gotten rid of all that stuff. Now, where is that animal? I couldn't trade the animal out. The reason being, they were mixed in with all the others, and they were just in a stack. This one here has to go. Otherwise, they could cause us problems at a later date. So we will just abandon them. Yeah. Bye-bye, buddy. It's just better this way. We, we can't be keeping the weakened ones and there's no point trying to heal them. Yeah, right, we'll have them settle down there. We'll do another quick colony and then we'll head over to Hinbrand after that. Yep, they're restocked as well and we can do some more trading. Sometimes Randy giveth and sometimes Randy taketh away. Uh, well, no, Randy taketh and then he taketh some more. But we've settled out in this tile and it's actually a really nice one because both the ancient, ancient dangers are right here. They're right beside each other. I've never seen this before. We can just settle in the middle and then tackle both of them really shortly, one after the other. Let's hope they have some more Luciferium. We, we even bought Luciferium at the last place, but uh, I did spend a long time staying there, so we kind of burned through a little bit of our reserves. I'd like to top them up some more. Yep, already seen an Ancient Danger. Let's, uh, let's get this started. In an attempt to make things a little bit faster this time, I think what we're going to do is we're going to immediately nick an Ancient Danger as our home. Uh, yep, that can be left open. Uh, you can stand right about there, and we're going to break open that wall. We're not even going to go with traps. We have a heavily equipped crowd. We've got double skips, we've got stuns, we've got all sorts of stuff. We're ready to take these guys on. Well, maybe maybe I was a little bit hasty. God damn it, why is there a centipede in here? Um, hmm, okay, maybe I was a tiny bit hasty. It'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. There's two scythers. They're going to come out and chase us. Then there's a pikeman and a centipede behind it. So all we have to do is pull back these. Yeah, uh, give us a line of fire. You go there. Uh, thumb, you're probably going to be bait. Middle, possibly also bait. We just need to kill the scythers and then we can use a skip on top of the remainder or the remainders. Okay, then let's not let's not mess this up. Thumb, you do have the stun. You also have Beckon and a bunch of other stuff. If we use Beckon though, they get knocked out of it the moment they get hit. So let's not do that to them. Instead, stun it is. Perfect. Now I need you to get out of the way. Okay, they're going that direction. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Next up, you. You don't look like you're going to be friendly, so I think you need to get skipped. Uh, why don't you just skip yourself right over... Hmm, you know what? You can put yourself right there. Actually, wait. Damn it. Okay, I've already committed. It's fine. Uh, you. I want you to switch to your melee weapon as well. Perfect. That means Chief just gave it an insta-whack and stunned it. Now, Index here is also got that ability, but... Oh, you look like you're about to target us. That is bad. So Index, you also have the skip ability. Let's grab that one, and we're going to put you right there. Now, where's your weapons? You've got a Uranium Club. Okay, not the best. Okay, you've got Zeus Hammer. That's more like it. And another Zeus Hammer. And... Death of Donkey Fool? What the hell happened? Oh, 
God damn it, you evil scyther. You ignore everyone else and go straight for that. Index, why have you not equipped your Zeus hammer? Where is it? Oh, you've got a psychic shock lance. You don't have a... Where is your, where is your melee weapon? Muppet, you should have brought that with you. Uh, you continue to target that. If you don't mind. Yeah, that actually works out great, chief. Tom, I'm going to want you to... You know, actually, let's make this even easier on ourselves. We're wizards, why not? Let's hit that with another stun. So long as they're not fighting back, that makes our life an awful lot simpler. Uh, Thumb, you know what? Stay out of it. You have no need to get yourself into any trouble. And we'll just give another stun to that one. Oh. <laughs> this is just stupid. Hey, stop hitting nails. How the hell are you still going? You, stop. That shotgun is really not doing a good job. You know what? Go for it. Perfect. Of course, that sucker's still going, but we're not going to let that stop us. Melee attack. How are you still alive? Damn, you've got to give it to those things. They really do have a lot of hit points. Oh, okay, that was... No, I think that was a good plan. We managed to take a place to stay in really quickly with very little effort. Though we still have to open those caskets though, don't we? Ugh. Everyone is feeling a little bit stressed, so since we're, we're doing things so quickly, let's just activate this now. We'll give everyone a bit of a mood bonus that should get us through opening these caskets. Ah, there we go. That gives everyone a nice day. Alright, let's open this up and see what we're dealing with. Right. Looking at all of them, they don't have anything I would consider too uh, important for our survival, so you know what? Let's, uh, let's maybe get in there nice and close and give them a very, very warm welcome. Yes, yes indeed. I'm thinking that's a good plan. All right, everyone, I'm going to need you to take your places. Uh, you. Oh, yeah, you don't have a melee weapon. I prefer if you didn't fire. We'd like to take out some of these people without that happening. As in, we'd like to take him out before he deploys that shield. I want that shield. Perfect. Now you get over there. You get over there. Oh, Tom, that was brutal, dude. What did you do to that guy? I could hear that from all the way over here. That's another one by the dust. Down and... Damn. Okay, that is just... You guys are monsters. Nicely done. Perhaps that was not my smartest move. We, we've come out of it quite well. We survived. Though we do have a few injuries, and that's that's really the annoying part. Some of them have taken stuff that they won't ever get rid of. Like missing toe. Yeah, one of their toes got knocked off during that fight. Little things like that do add up, so we probably shouldn't be doing that. But it was fun to try. If there hadn't have been a centipede in there, that probably would have been a lot easier. The centipede, two scythers, and a pikeman. Yeah, mm, tricky. But it was a reason. Resurrector Mexirum. That means we get a get out of jail free card for one of our people, assuming we can recover the body. That's that's really nice. Having one of those in our back pocket, hell yes. Hell yes. None of you get to die. No lying down on the job. If one of you dies, we can get to bring you back. So we've got one get out of jail free card. I think that's that, that, that was worth this too. After a quick day of setting things up, getting some meals in and the usual, we're ready to open up another tomb. Now, let's hope that there's not another centipede in here. That would be really awkward. What are we down to? 5%. You know what? Let's, uh, let's hop in the doorway. I've installed a couple of doorways here just to help with creature flow. Oh, well, would you look at that? It's three pikemen and a fucking centipede. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, let's run. Let's run hard away from that one. You need to... Oh, damn it. Immediately take cover. Ooh. Okay. How much damage did you get? One heavy gunshot blaster to the torso. Yeah, okay, you're alive. You're alive. Your speed's 2.05. You're going to be a little bit slower getting out of there than we'd like. Just make it around the corner. Make it around the corner. Dear Lord. The thing was all hippity hoppity all of a sudden. Okay, they'll go through the spike traps. That should at least take the centipede down really low. Let's get everyone prepped for this. Very simple plan. We line up over here. We wait until they put their faces around the corner. And then we either teleport them into our hammers or we shoot them in the face. Whichever one's simpler. Okay, now that one looks like it's getting ready to fire, which is bad. So, Index, you've got, uh, where is it? Skip. We're going to skip that right to there. Oh, God. 
Okay, that's that one done. Now let's skip the pikemen. Those pikemen are also rather dangerous. Yeah, this is not going as well as I was hoping, but we've managed to skip a bunch of them out of the way. Now, where do we put... Ow! That hurt. I could actually feel the impact of that one. Oh my god, Pinky's on a break. God damn it, Pinky. And uh, in that case, we will have to have our secondary person get on that. Now, you are going to have to engage that. Pikemen are notoriously weak in close combat. Uh, Index, however, has been weakened, so I'm getting them to stay back. Come on, come on, come on. Yep, that's good enough. You know what? That's too slow. Get over there. There we go. That's everyone in on it. You need to whip that out, and you need to get in close combat with that. We need to make sure that thing goes down and hard. Whew. Two centipedes, two tombs. That was not fun. That was not fun at all. In fact, we are not even going to open those caskets today. That would be painful. We're going to let everyone recover and heal up. That was a bit of a mess. And Pinky. Pinky going on a gourmand food binge at the moment. What are you thinking, buddy? Leaving everyone else to do your job for you. I just remembered there's a bunch of skill stuff we left behind. We didn't. We brought with us and never have actually used yet. So those skill trainer plants should definitely be on our list. Now, under the number section, it tells us who's got the weakest plant skill. And the reason I want to give it to the weakest as opposed to, say, someone who has a passion, Pinky is the only one with a passion. If you give it to Pinky, yes, they will get more experience out of it because of their passion for it. However, once they go above 10, you get skill degrade and we don't really plant a lot, so that, that will keep bringing, dragging them back down to 10. As well as that, if you take this person, say, from 3 to 5, as in increase their plant skill by 2 points, that does mean when they're foraging, they'd get the same skill gain, sk same amount of uh, extra berries as if we took Pinky from 10 to 12. So, yeah, I'm just thinking we spread it around on the lowest level to people, just because we can. So Chief can go use that one, and the one was where? Nails. Nails, you can also use that one. Uh, that also leaves us with Index here. Index should probably get their hands on a few other things. Where is it? Sidecast Wall Rays, that's good. And I also want you to get Beckon while you're at it. So, Wall Rays and, ah, wall rays and Beckon would make them a little bit more versatile. Done. Uh, we have... Ooh, we have a trader over here. Chief, I'm going to want you to get over there. I believe they're an exotic goods trader. I really hope they have something good for sale. They are okay. They've got a skill trainer for mining, a bionic arm, and a psychic shock lance. I will take all three bionic arms. I'm, I think we've got some people missing some fingers over here. As was pointed out in the comments, Pinky has lost their ring finger. Of course, they've replaced the ring finger with ring, as the two of them are a couple. But yeah, that, that's someone missing a finger that we could definitely replace. Though I think we might want to give it to Index. Did Index lose a thumb or something? You know what? I will figure this all out later. For now, we want to get everyone healed up. And once they're all healed up, we want to clean out this. We want to see what's inside these ancient crypto sleep caskets. Maybe they've got some other bits and bobs you might want to operate on at the same time to install. We have everything done here. Time to open up this tomb. Yep, yep. Hmm, let's see if there's anyone in here worth keeping. None of them have anything I'd really consider worthwhile, so I think we'll just leave them. One of them does have a learning assistance, which would be nice, but ooh, ooh, yeah, uh, that was a mistake. I should not have had that steel trap there. And uh, we'll see if the rest of them bother to stumble over the traps. If they do, great. That means there's one left. Hello, Ollie. Do you want to come out and play? Oh, Ollie does want to come out and play. Uh, Thumb, what would I like you to do? I would like you to stun them. There we go. Problem solved. Not, not even a scratch on anyone. All right, let's uh, raid this out and get out of here. I don't want to stick around for too long. We have cleared this place out. We've got everything sorted and we've managed to get 20 anima grass for Index. Index will now be hitting the lofty heights of level 6 Silink, which means we can get another Berserk Pulse on them. At the moment, I'm not using the Word of Inspiration from Thumb, namely because it will it'll wipe out all of their reserve side focus and I'm trying to keep a bunch, well, I'm trying to keep them fully stacked so that if anything does happen, we have someone to depend upon. Now, Index here, let's see what you've got for your level 6. you got Mass Chaos Skip. Okay, that's that's not going to be super useful. I've uh, been able to teleport a bunch of people randomly. Not so much. First thing in the morning, though, we're out of here. We're going to cook up a bunch of fresh meals, and then we're going to hop onto the world map and disappear. We are just about ready to get out of here. We've sent off our first caravan already. Now we're just uh, deconstructing it, or... On uprooting everything so we can start moving them. And another base bites the dust. Though we have got an awful lot out of this. Index is now level 6. So that's two wizards down. We've only got, what, five more to go? Should be fine. Should be fine. This was a pretty interesting run. They have a couple of sight trainers that are pretty rare. 
One is they've got Fire Skip and the other is they've got Neuroquake. I'm buying both of those. A second Fire Skip would be handy if we've got them on both our pawns. Why not? Then we can use it. We're far more likely to use it. In fact, they do have two of them and I'm tempted to take it. But if I take the second one, I got to wait until someone hits level five in their side training. That's going to be a while. I, I think we'll just keep the money just in case. I really want to hold out for a, another bionic leg just to uh, help someone else out. But no, I think we'll we'll call that a good trade. Now let's go find somewhere else to settle down, shall we? I would like to por point out we are foraging 162 berries a day. That is ridiculous. It's just everyone's got so much skill at it now that it just, yeah, we, we get loads and loads of berries. You know what, let's have a quick skill. We'll go over everyone's skills once we settle in here. Our squad is on the way down here to set up a new camp. We're going to be sandwiched in between this ancient danger and there's another one over here. But there is an awful lot of steel right here. Oh, actually. You know what, it might be better here. This would be a little bit nicer. Yeah, better location. But that's not what we're here to discuss. We're coming up at the end of the episode and I just thought I'd go over some of the progress we've made since our, uh, our little pawns have started out. For example, if you look here at shooting, where the chief was the weakest shooter by far. They were down at level 5, but we gave them the learning enhancer and put them to shooting uh, donkeys with an EMP launcher and would you look at it, they're up all the way to level 9. I think what we'll do is once they get to level 10 shooting, we'll take the learning enhancer out of them and we'll stick it into nails. I mean, we'll wash it first or something, I assume they I assume they wash it after the operation, right? Because that can't be hygienic to share them that way, but it'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure they'll get along just nice with it. Then after that, we've got melee. Now, melee we haven't been focusing on so much, but I've just realized we've got a lot of people with passions for this. Lots of Zeus hammers will be going around, I think. Uh, also, Thumb. Thumb can end up as an amazing close combatter. The reason being... They're, so, well, they're tough, so they take half damage when they get hit. Plus, we've given them a jump jet pack and a Zeus hammer. And their Zeus hammer is pretty good. That's like a Persona Zeus hammer. They just whack things into the ground. I think our close combat side of this is going to be pretty excellent as well. Plants-wise, the lowest skill in planting is five. Everyone else is six or above, which means nuclear stomachs all around and we can caravan forever and we'll never get food poisoning anymore. Except for, you know, the cancers. Construction-wise, everyone's actually really good at construction now. We've got a, the, the bottom four haven't quite hit eight, but they'll get there eventually. Enough of those uh, games of war we construct. Mining is a bit weak. We only have two good miners. I kind of wanted to get that up as well, but uh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Index and Thumb are excellent doctors, excellent medics in general. In fact, Thumb, because of their trauma savant, is now 150% at surgery success chance. They're an unbelievably good surgeon. Uh, throw into that that we'll probably give them some bionics at a later date. They can become absolutely terrifying. Also, that uh, trauma savant increases their manipulation, which makes them even better at melee. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with Thumb at the later stages of the game. Our little team of nutters did manage to take out two centipedes today. Uh, and took Okay, they took some damage, but compared to where we uh, were when we started, they're a hell of a lot tougher. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting prepped on this new colony. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.